and start going. <laughs> you know, the tongue would go out and go like, and then just, you know, I can't really imitate it right, but, and then I go, okay, here we go. <laughs> you know. Hey everybody out there! I'm here with my friend Tom Brecklin. You doing, Tom? Tom and Tom. Yep, there you go. And we're we're here today to reminisce about our recently departed friend Chick Corea, uh, who Tom had an extensive uh, working relationship and friendship for I don't know what forty years. Uh, since 1978, that's when I first met Chick. But well, right. 70, 70, yeah, 78. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I remember when I first met you. Uh, in New York, it was at Celebrity Center in New York, and I had heard about you there. If anybody doesn't know what that is, that's uh, the church that Tom and I uh, go to, Church yeah. of Scientology in New York. And I had heard that you had gotten that gig, and we had a brief encounter there. And it was like, what were you, 20 years old at the time? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> My God. My God. Oh, before we go on and talk about that, Tom, I want to send uh, our condolences out to Chick's family, his wife, Gail, yeah. uh, his yeah. dad and his sister, Liana, and uh, his grandchildren and Thad's wife's uh, name, I think, believe is Tracy. Yeah. And so uh, yeah. you know, we, hope you, yeah, we hope you guys are doing okay. But let, getting back to this, I don't think Chick would want us to, you know, be sad about, you know, this no, he uh, celebrates life you know uh, yeah, i'm sure he would want that yeah. celebrate their life exactly so anyway getting back to that first time i remember hearing that and i remember coming down to the bottom line you told me you were at the bottom line with chick and you had bunny on base yeah and i forget was, yeah. what, what year was that playing playing uh percussion at the time? i think so yeah but you you would know better than me because i was there right. and i didn't Maybe Elias played. I, I think Elias was there. Was it 80, 1980? I think so. Yeah, it was at the bottom line. And you told me you were playing, so I came down. I didn't stay after the show. It might I have, didn't. It might, it might have been Don Elias and uh, Alva Zudi. And was Joe Farrell playing or was Steve Kajala playing? Steve, uh, Joe Farrell wasn't playing. Okay, that was probably 1980. I'm trying to think. It's a long time ago, huh? Well, Joe, yeah, I mean, Steve got on board in 82. So it was, it was Vizzuti. It might have been, some of that was Joe Farrell, but though maybe Steve was on, maybe he got on after Joe left. So it was either Joe or Steve, Al Vizzuti, myself, right. Don Elias. We played there for three nights, actually. I think we played three nights at the bottom line. And I had already been two years in playing with Chick. Um, so I wanted to I ask you, Tom. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. But I wanted to ask you, at that age, when you first got the call, what did that mean to you? I went nuts. That was like going from one to ten. And like, it, it, it was, I couldn't believe it. I mean, uh, and I could tell you when it was. It was that big snowstorm that we had in 78 in New York when we were both- Not, Yeah, I was there. living there, yeah. Yeah, so was I. <laughs> I was born there, so were you. 1978, February 10th at 10 o'clock at night. That's when, it, that's when he asked me to play with him. Did you have to audition it or did he hear you I play? I auditioned one, twice. I auditioned twice. And the first audition was with Three bass players it was with Anthony Jackson, uh, Rick Laird, and Ken Smith. You know, so this was news to me. And what we did is, <clears throat> he auditioned me on um, uh, uh, Mad Hatter and Friends hadn't been out yet. And he auditioned me on the One Step, and I knew all the other stuff. I was all, I already knew all the other stuff, you know, but. Uh, they were nice enough. Uh, uh, actually, uh, they, I was I was lucky enough to get a test pressing of Mad Hatter, uh, and um, I listened to that. But it didn't get it. You know, didn't have any music, so it was. You know, I mean, to listen to a whole record of Chicks and digest it in like a couple of days, 
or one day is kind of like any any recording of his uh, because there's so much information that's obvious and hidden just like with any great music you know they go oh yeah that's uh, you know but then there's all this little stuff in there that you really don't hear and so you play it anyway so the first tune I just showed was the one step and we played the one step and then the second <clears throat> was the I guess you'd call it the the Elvin McCoy section of uh, Cappuccino. That's but the vamp is bump 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 So that we did that, and um, and then we did the vamp to Dear Alice. Which is just goes do 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 boom boom you know that fan forever see you know and uh, I did that with three bass players so that was six hours. And yeah, that, left, that, hmm? No, go ahead. And when I finished, I was so exhausted from more so from like just well first the experience. Because that was the first time, not only the first time I met Chick in person, but it was the first time I saw him play live in person. Mm -hmm. and it was also the first time I played with him. <laughs> so, but he was really nice. And I remember he, um, he also played off the test pressing of, and oh, actually, Friends wasn't even in the can yet, wasn't mixed yet. So he played me, uh, uh, he played me Sicily. And uh, I think we played a little bit of that too. But he played me that tune. So he said, so all he said to me after, the, after that was like, it's great playing with you, Tom. Um, you know, no, it wasn't like, hey, you're the guy. It was like very like that, you know. And, uh, and he said, uh, he said, I'll talk to you soon, man, because, you know, that was it. So I go, there's hope. You know, I thought, I, of course, I thought I played like crap, you know. Uh, and uh, then, well, later on, I got some stories from, from whatever, you know, but you don't need to hear that. It, it was all good stuff. But so anyway, I, I think it must have been like two weeks later or something like that. Chick was doing the tour with Herbie, the piano duet tour, the first one. And I'm cutting class because <laughs> I don't want to take. You're still class. in school at this point, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I was going. I was going to Nassau Community for. Uh, I graduated Nassau Community, and also what I think it was one of the greatest music schools I went to was East Middle High School with Bill Katz being the chairman we had all guys from new york coming to rehearse the big bands and all but anyway so i just wanted to give you know a little plug for east middle high school and the great music department that they had Good. have that they still have it's still growing thanks to bill katz and anyway so um i'm cutting school i'm still living at home i'm the last <laughs> one so you know i wanted to go into new york and and starve, you know. My mother said, well, why do you want to move in the city when you can stay here, you know? So, so I'd help out with the stuff, you know, you know, pay my share, you know, or whatever, you know. If I did it, Karen. Anyway, but, uh, uh, so anyway, so my mother calls my girlfriend's house. She goes, where are you? <laughs> and she goes, and I go, Oh, I'm at, I'm at my girlfriend's house, you know. I said, so she goes, Chickaree's office just, just called. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, they're playing tonight at Carnegie Hall. they got tickets for you. And I said, who? Chicken Herbie. I go like, oh, wow. You know, so so I just, <laughs> you know, I put my pedal to the metal and zipped home. And actually, I think I went directly into the city from there. And where I lived was about 45 minutes an hour away from the city, you know, just go, 
you know, parked at uh, the Holiday Inn, 10 bucks for the whole day. That Hello, was a lot then. That was, was a lot, lot then. then. It wasn't a lot, a lot, but it was a lot enough. But for a whole day, it was good, you know. So uh, parked there and then hightailed it on down to uh, uh, Carnegie Hall. And uh, next thing I know, I'm sitting in the box seats, you know. I look like freaking, you know. I mean, I'm dressed nice, but, you know, it's like animal or something, you know. I'm walking in. <laughs> oh, wow. And then all my heroes are attending this thing, you know. And I see Dave Liebman. So I saw John McLaughlin. I saw, I'm like freaking out, you know. But I'm just, you know, I'm sitting in the box seat and we see the first. And it's, you know, it's, of course, amazing now that it's on record, the uh, duets record. Oh, um, you know, the gigs, oh, nobody tell me I've got the gig. I want to make this brief because this is about, you know, uh, I'll try and make it brief. Uh, so nobody's telling me I got the gig or I don't have the gig, you know. Chick's manager at the time, Ron Moss, he's laughing. He's laughing his butt off because I'm like, <laughs> he knows I'm this ho-dunk from Long Island, you know. And uh, he's just laughing. And I met Rory Kaplan. And uh, so uh, so we were, uh, so we see the, you know, and then uh, we see the show. It's fantastic. Go backstage. I talked to Chick. He goes, can you hang out tomorrow? I'm like, oh, come on. Well, you, you just tell me. I, I know it would be fine. You know, it's like, yeah, good. Nice try, kid, you know. So we hang out the next day. Plays the concert. We're in the box seat. They have a little break. Somebody calls. He goes, Chick wants to see you. I said, okay, I've got to get my answer now. Mind you, I hung out the whole day and then the night before. So... I said, okay, I'm going to get my answer now. You know, I no, yes. Okay, fine. You know. So he goes, Tommy, how far do you live from here? I go, oh, not far. You know. No, 40 miles away, right? Yeah, right. So can you get your drums and come to this address, which was Celebrity Center? I said, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. You know, get my, put my drums in the car, like, drive all the way back, go to Celebrity Center, you know. I forget what Which is in the middle of Manhattan, so everybody knows. It was in Manhattan. Go drive to Manhattan, find a parking spot. I couldn't believe I found a parking spot. Set the drums upstairs, boom, 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 blah, 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 and Jeff Berlin is there. You know. And uh, so I never met Jeff. I didn't know who Jeff was. I don't know. Whatever. So we did the same thing. We played the same three tunes. We did the whole thing. And, um, and also we played Sicily. And you play the code of Sicily. That would be the make or break point, you know. Da 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 you know, right? So we do that, and he nails it. I'm going, oh, he's got the gig. I said, I'm just here to, I don't know, what, whatever. I truly thought that, and it's in, you know, and Jeff's doing like, oh, you, you got the gig. I don't have the gig. So he talks to Jeff over here. You know, I'm still at the drum set, and he's just. They're in the other room, you know, talking. I go, well, he's talking to him. I guess I don't have it. So I guess that's fine. You know, at least I got to play with Chick Corea. Chick, yeah. You know, and, and Jeff wasn't. And the bass player is great. I don't know. Jeff Berlin. Huh? So anyway, no, no, no answer. So he goes, uh, I'll, I'll, Tom, sounded great. He goes, I'll call you next week. <laughs> oh, no. Give me a break. Talk about, like. Torture. Come on, man. I mean, this. I mean, he kept it, you know. And yeah, but I don't think, uh, Tom. I don't think he would have kept doing that with you unless he really intended to use yeah, it. Yeah, well, you're talking about a kid who's like 20 years old. That's like that's his first major gig is, you know. I mean, yeah, that. yeah. Well, I understand. You know, it's like what? You know, I mean, seriously. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm not saying I'm like. Mr. Humble or anything, but still, when you think about it, you go like, you know, I mean, that's the only way you can express it. It's like, you know, and so uh, I'm going, geez, well, I don't know. So I pack up the drums, I go, and I draw, and it was one of the coldest, it was a really cold night. Mm. And I had to drive Jeff back to his place, there's potholes everywhere. And he lived in Harlem <laughs> at the time. So I drove him back to Harlem and, uh, and uh, dropped him off, said goodbye, and uh, 
and went home. That was, I don't know when that was, sometime in January or something. Had to be if it was that cold, yeah. Sometime in at the end of January, it was cold. I mean, it was back then. You know, the winters were real winters. They were just like, you know. And um, and then that was that. And then uh, and I get a call, and it might have been might have been a week later. I guess I guess it was February tenth. It must have been the beginning of February. It had to have been because so anyway. Or, or the very end of March. So, and I think it was a week later. And somebody gets on the phone and says, Chick will be calling you soon. And just keep, you know, so again, again, you know, I'm in the house and my sisters are there, you know. And it's that snowstorm. Like, I remember. And I said, Don't answer the phone. I have two older sisters. And I said, Do not answer that phone and tell me when it rings. Do not talk to anyone for over a minute. You know, I'd make explicit, you know. So I wake up that morning and I've been making a long story the longest one. I wake up that morning, it was that snowstorm and I remember I had, a, it was a a six foot drift right in front of, like the rest of the stoop was clean, but it had been snowing and it was, and the wind was kicking up that night. And they, I open the door, and there's this six foot drift, <laughs> and I got to shovel snow, which means I can't be inside to, you know, to whatever, to to guard the telephone. And in those days, you had one rotary telephone in the little foyer in the thing, you know, and then the stairs go up there, and then the living room comes there, you know, and there's the front door, like a Cape Cod house. So did you have an answering machine then? Well, there were no answering machines back then. There was. Oh. Uh, what, what was, was the answering service called? Radio Registry. Radio Registry, that's Radio right. Radio Registry yeah. back then. And I didn't have that. <clears throat> no, I did, but nobody was interested in calling me at the time. So I was like, whatever. So Except Chick. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah. So I'm shoveling snow. I get the whole thing shoveled. I go inside. What happens? It snows again. And it's snowing. And then I got to shovel it again, you know twice but i'm telling them you know driving my sister's paddock going like you know they have to be there you know i'm going like anyway so then um my uh it was uh 10 so so then finally you know 10 o'clock phone rings of course because it's seven o'clock in los angeles you know 10 o'clock phone rings it's chick you know he goes he goes tommy it's chick you know just like the way he says it like tommy it's chick I said, <laughs> I said, uh, hey, chick. And uh, how's it going? He goes, good. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking he's going to say, well, nice try, man. And, you know, hope, hopefully we'll play again. And that's great. And it was like, so listen, I want you to come on the road with me. You up for that? And I went, and I went, yeah. <laughs> and he goes, hip, hip. okay, so listen, the tour manager's going to call you and tell you what cases you need, what you need. And he goes, up. Uh, I want you to listen to three things. I want you to listen to Tito Puente. I want you to listen to Chela Cruz. And I want you to listen to uh, A Love Supreme, which said, you know, okay, yeah, cool. That was it. Because, all right, man, I'll see you in match. Okay. So, okay, great. Match. Yeah. The Boston accent, right? Click. Ah, like that. Ah. Now, my mom wanted me to finish school, okay? And you know, Catholic moms. New York Catholic. Oh, I do. I'm Catholic. Yeah. Well, you have New York Catholic, New York Italian mom. Well, New York yeah. Irish moms. Oh. Are just as bad. You know, you're gonna go to school to dinner, blah, 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 you know. So and we get to arguments. I said, man, I want to go to New York. I didn't call her man, but I said, I want to go. You know, you go to New York and you go into town, as we called it, and whatever. You know, and then you cut your teeth. And so, you know, here is the here's where the phone is, and here's the little you know the little desk, and then the stairs go up like this. So you're in your own little compartment, and the rest of the family's in the living room. So while everybody else was talking, my mother came up to me and she whispered in my ear, she goes, now I understand. Oh, great. It was such a sweet moment, you know. Oh, she man, said, my son, beautiful. It, in other words, it was like, this is what I wanted to do. And oh, he's, he's going to do it, you know. And it was it's just great. It was really cool. It was just a cool what? moment. That was actually probably a cooler moment than getting the gig, really. 
Wow, yeah. what a great now story! He, they, he whispered in my ear very gently. You know, now I now, now I understand. You know, wow, that that's, was a, great. That, that's that's a great memory there. That's a you know, that's, your mom that's mom amazing. letting you go. You know, she's letting you go. She's letting yeah, her baby mom, go. She was really cool. You know, she's she yeah. was always very cool. You know, but. Uh, and then the next, I don't know how many years we played together. I mean, we did the 78 tour with the 13 piece band. And then in 79, we did a little thing with Joe Farrell. We made it, you know, because uh, that was Rick Laird playing bass on that first band. And then we met Bunny the first night of the tour in London at Ronnie Scott's. And Chick was pretty impressed with him. And uh, he was a great player. Yeah. And then when we got home, we recorded Secret Agent, you know. Was that was tap set first or secret agent? Secret agent. Secret, secret agent. agent. I just I listened to tap step just you know to refresh mm -hmm. my memory. Yeah. And man, I mean, you didn't even do one straight ahead uh, thing on that. It was all either Brazilian, African, all yeah. these different styles. Yeah. And I'm going, Mike. And then you were also like playing marching, like snare drum in the beginning. Yeah. And I'm that was thinking. Exactly yeah i'm thinking at that age at that young age to be so sophisticated because the shoes you had to fill after the mad hatter album it was all steve gad and right. gad was the guy then you know so right. i don't know how deep you were into Steve's style of playing oh uh, very deep. but i have to admit yeah. that I, mean, I used to go chase him around asking for lessons back in the uh, day did you ever get any no i was too, he was too to busy ask. yeah oh no no he he actually he put it. <clears throat> my buddy, the first time I asked him, uh, my buddy said, "Are you going to ask him, or not? if you don't ask him, I'm going to ask him." He just finished mm. playing with stuff, and he was looking really good. I mean, it, it's just like he was on the side of the stage. And he was talking to two women, so I went up to him and I said, "Hey, Mr. Gad," <laughs> <laughs> and he said, uh, "He goes, hey man, what's your name?" He goes, "Tom." He goes, "Tom, I'd like to introduce you to Phoebe Snow." And somebody else. That's the <laughs> way Steve is, you know? Yeah, he's, he's very like, cool. The regular Joe. He's like a guy from the neighborhood, you know? Yeah, he's very laid As back. As is Rick Morata and, the other, you know, and and, uh, and Chris Parker, you know? I mean, he said to me, he goes, he goes, listen, man, he goes, I'm, I'm so busy. We'd start something and we wouldn't be able to finish it. He says, well, I'd like to be able to finish what we started. And then I thought that was great. I said, well, at least I talk to him. It wasn't my courage. It was my friend threatening to ask, mm. uh, ask instead of me. Yeah. So it was a good thing. That so for you to take over, you know, and play those songs that he put his stamp on, and then you started getting into your own thing after that in your own recordings, was the journey the last time you recorded with Chick? What, uh, the, 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 what's it called? Um, the Ultimate Adventure? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. The ultimate adventure. That was, uh, that, well, yeah, I did, I did, uh, I did two tracks did. or three tracks. I did what was called, oh, I can't remember the name. Good Tom. Nice. I, oh, I could help you out here. Uh, King and Queen and Planes of Existence. Yeah, Planes of Existence, yeah. Right. Yeah, I remember listening to that. You know, you have on there, you have you, you have Vinnie Caliuta, Steve Gadd. I mean, this I is like to, incredible stuff. Here. To Marrera, um, yeah. And then we went out on tour with that, with uh, um, uh, with Carlos Benevent and uh, Ruben Dantas and Jorge Pardo and uh, guys that worked with Camarón and um, Paco de Lucia. You know, Camarón was a, a famous uh, flamenco singer, very revered. And of course, Paco de Lucia, an incredible flamenco guitarist but uh secret agent was the first one at producers workshop that i did and that i was, gotta listen to that i that haven't heard really that in I years it was fun wow. I, you know i really wasn't thinking about filling anybody i was so well what, let me ask you this tom was that your first recording experience uh studio uh, wise in a studio like in a you know that that setting on a real uh well, I mean, I, I did some jingles and stuff in New York. I mean, if you one jingle and uh, I remember those days, yeah. A couple of recording yeah. sessions, but nothing, no big recording sessions. You know, that was my first real big recording session was Secret Agent, mm -hmm. and uh, and the first tune that we recorded was the Golden Dawn on Secret Agent. 
and it was just Chick and I playing because Chick was trying to get Bunny Bunny's uh, uh, pay, uh, visa to get into the United States so we could record the record. So we went on and we recorded um, we recorded a, a Golden Dawn and Fickle Funk, of which Chick and I. It was a jam that Chick and I was doing, waiting for Joe Farrell to come to a rehearsal. And I was really? playing this beat, and he goes, "Yeah." And he go, "I was playing this beat." He goes, "Or I, well, he ended up playing." No, he was, he was saying, "Tommy, what would you play to this?" And he goes, "That's all it was." Right. So I just started jamming with him. I just started playing duo, and then he came up with the B section. Do 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 dee. And then later on, it came, you know, you know, so, so we were jamming on that and we kind of, uh, I mean, he wrote it, but we kind of just made it together, you know, and then that went on the record. And then of course, Bleep Street Blues. And, uh, but anyway, those two, those two tunes we recorded first and 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 also that first part before we go into the rhythm where it goes and all that click 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 that's all piano harmonics and i remember i was going in the bottom of the piano holding this he goes tommy go underneath the piano and hold the strings this way and then this, go this way on the top and he was holding the piano he goes now stand still they're going to record and i'm like Come on, <laughs> press record. He, goes, he starts going, and he, and he do the first one. Duke, he goes, oh, well, he did the, 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 he did that first. Then he told me to go underneath the piano. I'm like, go underneath. My hands like this. I don't know, like I'm doing some sort of Segovia fingering or whatever, you know. And I'm like, what the hell? And he goes, click, 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 you know. Wow. And then he put That's it all crazy. together and, you know, overdubbed it. And then you hear it, you know, cluck, 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 cluck. and it sounds like a little synthesizer, but it's all, it's all piano harmonics. Wow. Now, now, how was he in terms of being a leader and, and letting you stretch out? Did he dictate to you what he wanted or did he just let you create your own thing? Uh, well, most of the time, you know, but he was particular about certain, I mean, he'd make suggestions and then, and then you would just, and when you had it, it was it was great and it, it came pretty came pretty fast and um if if you knew uh, if you knew what you were doing you know yeah I, mean, I was always flying by the seat of my pants i mean you know yeah. and uh, it, i guess that worked you know <laughs> to some degree yeah obviously but you know and that's probably from and a lot of guys from our our era you know and like a lot of you know they listen to so many records so you get you get versed rhythmically more so by the records and trying to figure it out on your own rather than books, you know? Yeah, we didn't have that then. We didn't have YouTube then. I know, it sounded like, yeah, we never read David Crockett. We never had that then, you know? No, we didn't. No. You know, that, that kind of thing. And because, you know, I mean, they say, okay, how did you learn how to, I mean, whatever. How did you learn how to do that? I go, well, I listen to this percussionist play and I try to emulate that and understood that. And and then you had great drummers like Steve Gadd, Bernard Purdy, Dave Garibaldi, Elvin, Lenny White, Billy Cobham, and the 16th note guys, you know, or the 8th note guys. Well, Billy swings anyway, and so does yeah. Lenny. Lenny's like Elvin when he played on with, 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 with Chick. Well, you and go Lenny back to James Brown, you know, a lot of Bernie that came Hub from yeah. James Brown, yeah. Bernie Hubbard, yeah, you got uh, Chavo Starks. Stubberfield. You know? Yeah, all, all those guys, you know, uh, all the King's men, you know, the, the funky women. You know, what's he doing? Oh, he's going, da da da. Uh oh. Uh oh. So then you, uh oh. But I didn't learn that later on until I heard Didi Ciccarelli, Andre Ciccarelli from Paris, amazing right. drummer. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know who he is. Yeah, so we amazing. did those two tunes. And uh, then Bunny came in and he put the bass on, and then we did all the rest of the stuff like uh, drifting and um, what was the other one? Anyway, that's when I first met Ayrton. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, Ayrton. Oh, it's great. He, 
he's super cool. I was so afraid of him because he's big. He had all the hair, and he played yeah. pendero on the, you know, and it, the, the tune goes, you know, do, do, pre -on, do, 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 do pre -on, that kind of thing. And he's going, do, 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 you know, and uh, I guess we did like a, we made a flam together. And which was really cool that was consistent and we're listening to i think we did it in the first take we listen to the the playback and you know Anthony was standing there and all of a sudden i feel this i feel what so Anthony goes did you hear that man and i'm going uh uh and before i could answer he goes uh man it goes Brah! like that and he goes that's great and i went uh yeah like i meant to do that. <laughs> It was all new to me, man. It was just yeah. like sometimes, you know, just sometimes out. mistakes turn out to be great things, you know. You, you yeah, didn't it was it plan out, it. It just happened. Yeah, it turned out to be a great record, and um, and then we did tap step at at um, at Chick's house. He had put together the studio. Well, not this was before Mad Hatter, studio. right? No, we recorded that. He called the first Mad Hatter studio was at his house. Oh, okay. That's before. Oh, yeah. The, Bernie was yeah. in the little sitting room with this. I don't know how many channel mixer, sitting <laughs> on a couch. Joe <laughs> Farrell was in that. I don't know if you've been to, you've been to Chick's house, right? At the time, uh, not at that time. I'll tell you about when I met. It was Chick like in, this in indoor patio, right? You no, know, with beautiful glass and wood. So you put Joe in there, and he was like just standing there, you know, with his glasses and his hat and cigarette. And uh, so he was there. I was in the main living room. And I think Chick, yeah, Chick was across from me because he was either going direct or playing piano uh, with the with the Rhodes. And um, so, yeah, so we tracked at Chick's house. We, wow, that, that album was all tracked at Chick's house. And then, I didn't um, know that. and I was about to leave for home, and I get a phone call. And he goes, "Tom, you got to come over here. I got this new tune. You got to come over here now." I said, <laughs> "I said, sure, man." He goes, "He goes, you'll get it right away." You'll get it right away. He says, just come on over. So, so uh, you know, I take, uh, I think I took a cab or somebody drove me over to the house. And um, I think the tune was called Flamenco. Uh-huh. If, if you're familiar with that record, there's a lot of stuff in there. It goes, uh, it goes. Uh, I uh, just listened to it. Yeah. So I know. Um, then it goes ba da 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 ba ba, and then it goes part. Now here's the part he, he thought I, he said, "Oh, you get this in a minute." Da 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 Anyway, it's got all that stuff in it. Wow. So I said, I said, Chick, give me the music. He goes, no, you get it right away. No, you get Chick, give me the music. <laughs> no, you get it right away. He said, just give me a lead sheet, you know? <laughs> give me something. <laughs> okay, I'll give you the lead sheet. Just give me something. And then we got it. We get, you know, and then we, I think we did, I think we did either two or three takes of the thing. And it, and it worked out wow. great. It really worked yeah, out. Yeah, it sounded great. I mean, I could sing it in time. <laughs> ah, never mind. Ah, great rhythmic Dude, memory, folks, Tom. There you go. But I played it right on the record, and we played it right oh. on the gig. So there you go. You know, I didn't meet Chick until 1987, personally. Uh -huh. um, I can't. I moved out here, and someone invited me to a party, and. You know, just like you, I've played with some great people, uh, you know, sold a lot of records. And I've been also around a lot of uh, great actors and directors because I also acted in New York. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't, uh, you know, this guy that like celebrities, you know, I don't care. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but I got in there and I was picking up an hors d'oeuvre or something. I looked and there was Chick right on the other side of the room. Right. And I was like, because emotionally... You know, his music had, you know, how, how emotionally music can touch you. I was invested in his music before I knew who he was. I'd hear him playing on like uh, Blue Mitchell's record or, or uh, yeah. 
what's his name, the sax player Stan Getz. And I always loved his compositions, but I didn't really know it was him. Yeah. Right. And, and, until I figured it out. So I became actually this time. I, I became nervous for the first time. Right. And so he was so cool. We got into a great conversation about music. And I told him, you know, I actually was honest with him. I said, you know, I don't get nervous around people, you know, famous people, but I do because, you know, of what your music means to me. So we hit it off then. And then, uh, you know, I would see him from time to time. And then I would see his mama. Uh, oh. What's her name? Anna, yeah. right? Was it Anna? She great. was great, but I don't know if she told me the story or not. I, it could have been Mark Frankovich who was working at the studio. I don't know what he did. Was he, he the studio manager or something there where your yes. wife Evelyn worked? Because I know Evelyn ran a lot of stuff there. Well, Evelyn, my wife, who's superwoman. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm not she saying is. That she's my wife. Mm -hmm. uh, when they, if if uh, she. When they took over, when when Mad Hatter went public, Ron mm -hmm. Moss and her took over, and Evelyn, she was, uh, I because I saw it. She, she was, was the linchpin, right? She yeah. was the studio manager. She booked the room. She um, hired the people for the maintenance. You know, got that. She mm -hmm. got that. I mean, I mean Ron too. You know, but I got, they got I it going. Play. She got she got that that studio solvent. Beautiful. You know, and then it was time to pass the hat over, and she started hiring. She was hiring people. You know, she she built the people. organization, right? And then she got Mark, and she hired Mark. Okay, so Mark. this story, this story, uh, and I know Evelyn worked with Chick for many, many years. Yeah, and, she was uh, also the heart of of, of Chick Corea Productions at that time. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah, you don't hear about the people behind the scenes. You know, we hear about the artists mainly. Funny, I left Chick's band and then she got into that, you know, at the time. <laughs> and then, of course, we played together again. But Evelyn really forged that whole deal. Anyway, that's another story. But she's Right, I'm sure. But incredible. Anna, I don't know if Anna told me this or whatever, but she said that when Chick was a child, like eight, nine, ten years old, she would change his bed sheets. And at night, she, you know, he'd go to bed and the light would go off and she'd go to bed. But in the morning, she would find in pencil music written down on his bed sheets. Yeah, that's what I heard too. That's what, that's you know, what and she'd have to take it and wash the sheets. And Anna she'd was keep a finding. Yeah, she was. Uh... I never played with her, but we had great story. We, we talked a lot about making Italian food. So yeah. then uh, his son, Thad, I, I had a gig in the valley and I would ask him to come and sub for me. Mm. Uh, so I got him on a couple of gigs and uh, you know, he's a good drummer. Yeah, so yeah. he went with the Blue Man group later on. But I was on the, the ship, the Free Winds, and mm. I was with the, gold, the Golden Era band, the orchestra. Yeah, yeah. And we were playing for all these people and Chick was on the ship. Uh -huh. So, uh, you know, I didn't realize he was on the ship, right? So I'm playing and we're, and we're in this like 14 piece band and I'm playing and I played around Frank Sinatra, all of these and with, with different people and I'm playing and I look up and Chick is about like two rows in uh, and everybody's looking at the singer and Chick is like this, looking at me and I'm going, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I just playing. So afterwards we started talking and that's when we really started to hit it off. But I wanna know if, if you, if this ever came up, we we were had a conversation for about two hours one night uh, off the dock one night, and it was right when he recorded the uh, Electric Band Two album, uh -huh. and we were discussing everything. We just we discussed you and how great it was. He enjoyed playing with you, and if, of course, you know, from a drummer's point of view, we were talking about drummers and all that. Right. And he mentioned you and how wonderful you were, and. Uh, and of course, he told me he was a big Philly Joe Jones fan growing up, right? Which I'll tell you a story about that. But he said to me something that I was like, I just was quiet. He says, you know, Tom, I can't listen to my own music more than once or twice. When I record an album, I have to put it away. Because mm. I, I think I should have did this, I should have did that. Which is a lot of great musicians are like that. They feel right. they don't play as well. You know, and you even said it earlier, and I always feel like that too. And Vinny, when I was, you know, hanging with Vinny, would say the same thing. He thought he would play terrible. So um, he said, 
But that album he could listen to for the first time. I don't know why. But it was interesting. It was interesting. I don't know if that changed later on when we would. I didn't even bother to touch that again with him later on. But that stuck with me, that Philly Joe Jones thing. And I had a pair, you're going to love this. I had a pair of old Gretsch Philly Joe Jones signature sticks. Oh, yeah. They had to be from like the late 50s or 60s because even then they were a little warped when I got them. Right, right. So I, so I came off the ship, you know, and we, we hung out. And, and without telling him, I sent him those sticks. Mm-hmm. And he freaked out. He loved it oh, because that was. It's out of, you know, and then years later, there was, I, do you know about this guy who did a whole transcription? It's about this thick of all Philly Joe Jones' drum solos. You're talking about, uh, talking about Vinnie Ruggiero? No, this guy, I think he's from Sweden or something. No, oh, it's no, a whole, man. whole book of transcribed drum solos. Every drum solo Philly ever did. Oh, wow. So I, 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 uh, I don't forget, I don't remember if I called him or what. I, I think he was on the road. So I emailed him. I said, Chick, did you, did you hear about this book? He says, oh my God, no. So I bought the book and I sent it to him. Uh-huh. And he just went crazy. He had it on his desk because when they moved, he went to Florida down there. Right. But, but uh, we would correspond back and forth. He, would, he was really into Bill Evans, he told me. Was, was that, that the, Bill Evans? Did he tell oh, you that? You know, I didn't know that. Actually. Yeah, he would send me videos uh, and Michelle Petrucciani. But, you know, I think Wynton Kelly was his first hero, right? Uh, was it Wynton Kelly who played piano uh, and Whit Miles? Yeah, but Wynton Kelly, I'm thinking uh, Bud Powell. Bud Powell, and, and he also loved Wynton too. Yeah, and Art Tatum. And, but Bill, Bill, yeah, and Art Tatum, but Bill, he would send me links to like Bill Evans concerts. Yeah. And I was going, wow, you know, it's pretty intense that he, he loves that stuff. But he was in his own style, his own thing. And so I, I mean, I just, you know, the, the last, um, you know, different stories would come up about, like, when <laughs> he told me a story about uh, the first time, I think he was playing with Blue Mitchell and they were opening up for Thelonious Monk. Ah, what and is I think he? at the time was a big story. But, you know, it's funny. You know, he told me stories about Miles when we were first playing together. Yeah. And then when we started playing later on, like in 2004 again, I mean, like, you know, I'm talking about steadily. He'd come up with some stories that I had never heard him talk about before. And one of them was this one about Thelonious Monk. It's great. He said, he said, well, you know, of course, I mean, I was a big Monk fan. I was like this nervous kid who played Blue Mitchell. You know, we played and... You know, everybody shared the same backstage. This chick was like, I'm sitting here, you know. And that was a time when he wore the, he had the, the dark rim glasses, not the round ones, you know. You know, the, yeah. you know so stand over here. So Monk walks in and he's got one collar up like this and one collar down. And he's looking in the mirror. And Chick said, he must have seen me because I'm, I'm, he says, I'm sitting here looking at him. This is what Chick was saying. I'm sitting I'm looking at him like this, you know. I could see Monk. He sees me, and he, you know, he puts his eyes like that. You know, and he had the, had the collar here, so he went like this. He went as soon as he knew that Chick was watching. He go, boom! <laughs> and he put the next, put this collar up the other. Collar. <laughs> yeah. Now that same night, I guess he went out, and then he went out to play. Now there was a hole in the curtain. And Chick would tell me, told me, it was just enough to, to see Monk and you know what he was doing or. Well, he could, or he could see the whole band. I don't know, but he could see definitely could see what Monk was doing. So he said they start out with rhythmic, you know. Saxophone falls, plays the saxophone player takes a solo, bass player takes a solo, Monk takes a solo, trade, I mean trade eights, trade fours. They go back to the. The head again, da 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 you know. They finish. The crowd goes nuts. This is Chick telling me this story. He's like, they're going crazy, right? And the and the uh uh the applause dies down. The monk looks at the audience and goes da 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 plays it again. He goes saxophone solo. Piano solo, 
they solo, trade fours, trade, I mean, trade eights, trade fours. Back to the head, da 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 da, end the tune. Ba, boom. Yay, everybody's uh, Monk looks at the audience. <laughs> one more, one uh, more time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> three times. And Chick thought that was the coolest thing ever, you know? Oh, at least man. that's what he told me, you know? He said, yeah. He, said to me, he goes, well, I guess Monk figured they liked it so much, she'll play it again. If they liked it, you know, I'm going to play it, you know? Wow. I'm glad you he know, told that story. It was, it was that's great. a beautiful story. He, uh, Jamie Fon, who recorded with you, I think, on Tap Step, right? No, he's a bass player. He recorded on Tap Step. Well, he played a piccolo bass, I think. On oh, that. maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Excuse me. And Jamie rented, I think, part of Mad Hatter for his school, which, you know, I taught for for many years. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, he told me a story. They went, I think Chick was playing with Miles at the time, and, and they met in New York in the 60s, and they became, right. you know, very close friends. Yeah. He said oh. he was backstage. He was backstage, and he picks up, Chick picks up Miles' trumpet, and he's playing in it. Well, I didn't hear and, that one. Go ahead. Yeah, Miles comes in and he says, Hey, Chick, get out of my horn. <laughs> <Like that. laughs> and he puts it down. Oh, man, that was that was a funny story. Another but story. Uh, Oh, you done? Uh, you done no, no, go story? ahead. Go ahead. I got another, another one. Story but go Chick ahead. told me around that time, which he never told me before, was his first gig with Miles. Ah. I can't remember the full story about, like, you know, he was playing. He said he was really nervous. Can you imagine Chick nervous? I can't. He was like, like, okay, what's, don't be saying that, you know, whatever, you know, it's, it's, it's like the stuff that we all have experienced with like, you know, on our first gig with somebody heavy, sure. you know? Yeah. And um, so he told me, he said, he went to the bar, smoked a cigarette, got a drink like this. And he's going, oh God, what just happened? All of a sudden he feels this, it smiles. And he whispers in his, he you can bleep it out if you want to, but it's got a story. It's okay. Go ahead. I tell the story. He goes, and he whispers in his ear. He goes, you're a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Talk about a validation, you know, right? Can you imagine <laughs> shit? You know, I guess we all have had him, you know, even him, you know. And it was a great story. You know, he just thought, oh, and I think he said to me, he goes, oh, geez, I thought I was going to get fired, you know. I said, I'm going home on the next plane. All of a sudden. Uh, the next whatever you know and, and you know, motherfucker. wow it's crazy did you ever see those videos where chick and jack d Jeanette would switch yeah and chick would play drums and jack would play piano just saw that recently. go back oh man that's well, another crazy one of, the, one of the greatest concerts i ever saw was in santa barbara with jack d Jeanette, bobby mcferrin and chick it was amazing wow because chick and Jack and Jack D. Jeanette would they would switch instruments to go I mean it was basically they would start and then two hours later they'd stop. Just wow. creating music. I mean, but amazing music. It didn't sound like a I mean, it was composition, man. And of course, all three of those guys are great composers. Great improvisers, right? Yeah, you know, too. Incredible, but you got to be a great kind of composer, I think. I mean, I think that was well, really cool about. I, I think you need to be a great improviser first, because all your great That's classical true. guys yeah, that right. was all improvising. You you're know? right. You're right. You're right. But uh, but have a sense of composition about you that it's just it's, it's just I found it amazing. I just it was wow. It was incredible. I wish and, I was there, man. When you listen to those guys play with Miles. That's what they did. I mean, yeah. it, well, six, you know, in Chick's era, you know, we made something happen, but they were, they could make it happen. I don't, I mean, of course, we weren't there every night, but I don't well, know. I, 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 I doubt if there was a bum night. <laughs> you know, I, I would love, and I've seen you, I have a video queued up if you want to see it, of you playing with Chick, uh, where my favorite things, you know, he, all of his orchestrations were incredible as compositions, but I would love when he would just, you know, acoustic piano, upright bass and drums and just, you know, improvise. Yeah. And uh, one time I saw him with the acoustic band, which you played with, right? You would, yes, you would do that once in a while with him. Yeah. And yeah, I know when Chick needed somebody, hey, Tom, could you make it? <laughs> right. And then when you were off with, uh, uh, Robin Ford, right? Right. 
you well, know, you, you that, couldn't that, you couldn't make it right during those no, I'd be, times. I'd, actually, I was. Yeah, I'd be playing with, and, and then it, it was like in eighties, the eighties. I was, and I, I did a, I did a stint with Al Demiola too, and that's another yeah. story. <laughs> anyway, yeah, um, but getting back to this, um, so um, that setting always impressed me. You know, yeah. the fact that he could just wail and improvise, which came out of that 50s, 60s, yeah. you know, post-bop, hard bop era. But I, I want to mention Chick's graciousness uh, towards me and towards uh, my pianist at one time. I got a little glare here. We were playing at the Celebrity Center brunch in Hollywood, and yeah. uh, Chick walks in with Gail and John McLaughlin. They were doing the five-piece pan. Right. So Chick, hey, how you doing, Tom? And blah, 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 right? Which I used to see you there. One time you popped your head in and I was like, oh, <laughs> and you were out. Uh, oh, me? Oh. Yeah. yeah I, so okay. anyway, uh, anyway, so my pianist, who's a great, his name's Marty Rosen. I don't know if you ever worked with him, but he's a great jazz, you know, mainstream jazz pianist. Yeah. And, you know, the old school, the old chord substitutes, like, you know, what came up, what Chick came up with right yeah. no charts you know change keys alternate chord changes so he's like chicks here you know and i went like yeah so and i said look i said chick doesn't we're not going to play any of his music chick doesn't want to hear his music chick wants to hear you you know we're not going to play to impress him we're doing we're going to do what we do you play your ass off just play your ass off and he'll really enjoy it right right they stayed almost three hours there you go and at the and at the end of it, both him and John come up and Gail, and wow, that was really great. And he walks up to Marty and I say, Marty, this is Chick. And Chick goes, man, I love the way you play, he said to him. And I said, Chick, you know, you guys both work with Willie Bobo, right? And, you know, it was like, he was so gracious to him, but Marty also was playing, you know, and, and yeah. being himself. Because there's nothing worse than, you know, you walk in and somebody's trying to impress you by playing oh. your music and trying to play like you, yeah, yeah. you know, and Chick was just so wonderful. And, you know, Marty was just like, oh, my God, that, you know, great compliment. Yeah. And uh, they loved it. So he was very giving that I noticed. And you probably noticed it, oh, too, Chick all the time. Giving. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. you know, he was really... He's a cool guy, had a great sense of humor. We had a lot of laughs, a lot of laughs. I mean, oh, it was great. These bits and everything. Oh, it was just really. When was the last time you saw him? Well, oh, God. It's, I saw him in Florida just in passing. You know, just a quick hello. That was pretty much it. That was. Where are you now, in Texas? Before, yeah, Austin, Texas. About yeah, four right. years ago was the last time I saw him. Uh, you know? Okay. But uh, uh, what did I say? I can't remember. Anyway, but it was a lot of hilarious stories. I mean, when give uh, us one. <laughs> well, well, one was um, which was really good. It was the first tour I was on. We had a day off in Copenhagen, and I mean, I wrote this on a Facebook thing because I remember Evelyn told me he said because uh, we found out the day uh, quite by accident the day after he he passed on you know uh yeah which was it was a shock day. wasn't it it, it was a, a shock yeah we didn't even know he was sick i know it was know that he, fast you know, yeah yeah which is you know like chicken i don't think you wanted anybody making a fuss over him you know what i mean and no, no. And if, you know and uh but anyway um uh so they they uh you know, Evelyn said, well, we should write something for when they do release that he passed away. So I thought of this story, and it was, it was again, 1978, we were in Copenhagen. We had the same promoter in Copenhagen that Queen had. You know, and the Re We Will Rock You record was out. You know, We Are the Champions and all that. So now, th th this hotel, it's got like a, you know, some of those fancy hotels have a, I call it like a shoehorn staircase that go up to like a half a, uh, a half a floor, you know. In other mm -hmm. words, you have the. Say you have. Uh, 
Okay, this is your staircase. <laughs> I can't see it. Anyway, never mind. So you have the main <laughs> lobby, right? You have the main lobby. If you look at the lobby, you have these staircases that go up and around into another floor, onto another floor. And then you can go under those staircases and continue into the lobby. So I remember I got a, I had gotten up a little early, had my coffee, you know, I was like, I'm in Europe, all the smokes, you know, I was at the top of I was at the top of the staircase of the horseshoe, you know, the the, the left side. Standing here. And there are these stained glass windows over here and there seems to be like a commotion going outside. And 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 the lobby's clean. The lobby's clean. There's nobody in the lobby except me up the stairs. So so the doors are go open. Nobody goes into the lobby, but these four guys just struggle to get through the crowd. And it's Roger Dean, uh, Brian May, Freddie Mercury, and it, you know, and, uh, and and they're all struggling to get to the crowd like this. And they, and they finally break through, and then they go up this, the middle stairs and go into this room. So I said, oh, shit, what just happened here? It's just it's clean. And so now... There's this big crowd out there, and you can see it through the door and everything. And like Moses parting the the seas, you know, Chick's got his got these tan pants on, Capizio shoes, uh, his Hawaiian Tommy Bahama shirt, eating an apple, and just walks through the crowd like it's nothing. He just goes, he just like you know, no struggle, no nothing. And he goes in the middle of the lobby, and he sees me, and he eats his apple. He goes, Tommy, what's going on? I go, Queens in town. Oh. oh. Walks and goes, Who's Queen? <laughs> he said, it's all oh, their famous rock group. He goes, Oh, cool. Okay. See you tonight at dinner. Look, I see you, man. <laughs> it was like, that was it, you know. But you'd have to experience, I mean, you know, these guys, the four guys from Queen struggling to get to the crowd, and then Chick, like butter, just kind of goes like right through, <laughs> like there's nobody there, you know. That was really something else. That was funny. Another one that was sounds uh, funny. that same tour. We were in France, southern France, and I remember we had just finished the gig. Gig was was great. It was a great gig, and and this promoter, you know, he looked pretty artsy fartsy. You know, he wanted to check. He goes, "Chick, check out my new group." Uh, you know, this oh. group I'm going to uh, represent. You know, so he puts on the cassette tape, and he's and the, and the promoter closes his eyes like this. So Chick gets in this funny mood and he, you know, they had those, um, you know, mustard and uh, mayonnaise. They have it in Europe. They have them in toothpaste containers, kind of. So yeah. He goes, Look at me like this. I said, no, man, you're not. Because we used to have these cold cut competitions, you know, sometimes <laughs> cold cut fights. I go, no, you're not. He goes, he's looking at me like this. <laughs> so, and this guy's oblivious. He's listening to this music, and we're running around the table like this. And then I realized what he wanted to do. You know, he's, he's making the salad, going like this. You know, mixing it up, acting really crazy, while this guy is like, oh, you know, digging on whatever he's his group. So then he gets a cold cut, and we used to do this game. You know, who could stick the cold cut on the mirror the longest? And <laughs> meanwhile, we're doing, we're running around, throwing all kinds of shit around. And this guy is like, he's like doing this. He has no idea what we're doing. And then, and then oh, let's just say, do it. Like, say, here's, let's see, here's the mirror. You get your cold cut. I don't know if you can see it. You get the technique. Okay, so the the screen is the mirror. So you get your cold cut. You put it there. Chicks over here, and he goes, "You ready?" He goes one, two, three. You know, bang. You know, and then. Never, <laughs> You had to be there. Anyway, I thought it was Oh, funny. my God. I get the but, picture of it, though. But meanwhile, this guy is, like, sitting there, like, you know. Yeah, and he's I, out of it. Yeah, he's – he, And actually, we, we all left, and he was still in the room, and we split. You know? <laughs> but there, there are some you know, stuff. I probably think of funny stuff, other funny stuff. Ch Chick there. always seemed to me that he had that kind of, like, child-like oh, playfulness, yeah. you know, every time I was around him. Always up for a game. I mean, just. Uh... I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, back in around, I think, 2015 or so. I don't remember the exact date. Maybe it was after that. I'm not sure. 
but I got a call. I was talking to Mark, you know, Mark Frankovich. Yeah, yeah. And he says, oh, I'm coming out to L.A. I said, oh, great. Well, come and see me. You can stay here, you know, at my house, which, you know, occasionally he would. And he says, oh, I got to come out and I got to transport everything that chick ever recorded. Oh, to the shit. new studio in Clearwater. He says, and I got his assistant. I forget the guy's name. He's going to come with me. I said, okay, no problem. So right. then about a week out, he says, he can't come. Chick needs him to do something with him. And, I, and I'm stuck. I said, well, I'll tell you what. I won't take a New Year's Eve gig. Uh, but oh, you pay me uh, for recently? A few it's years ago. Clearwater, when they yeah. just got, yeah. So you guys called us from where you were, you and Marky. Yeah, you know? so he came here. He flew here. And then he rents this 18 foot truck, right? So we're gonna go and he hires these guys to load the truck, right? Right. And me and him are gonna drive it from LA to Clearwater. Right. So now this is like the original tapes of what you recorded, everything, the yeah. three inch, everything, everything, including stuff from the time that Chick started recording himself on right. cassettes. Right. You know, so this whole truck is full of stuff and then we got to pick up some video equipment and I just keep watching the truck sinking lower and lower closer to the tires right uh, so it's a three day we made it in three days so we're driving out and Mark is like every every you know on his phone he's trying I said pull the truck over I'll drive you right. can do because right. Bill Rooney I guess at the time was his yeah, manager yeah. or something That's right. he's calling him like where are you you know, is everything all right? You know, because if this truck goes off the rails and crashes, that's it. They lose all these recordings. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh. and like, so Plus these were all. Awesome. And everything else that's going Oh, God. But it was that's cold. It. Hmm? it was cold coming over. It was January. Oh, good. Well. Yeah, so, but every, every few hours, Bill wanted to know where we were because like now I'm feeling this huge responsibility. Sure. You know. Oh my God! And I look, and it's all all the stuff, everything that from Stretch Records, uh, mm -hmm. all this stuff. So I dropped it off, and your wife Evelyn arranged the whole thing, and then they flew me back. I was there for a couple of days, and, and right. they flew me back. Right. But I can't tell you, it's like I got to make sure nothing happens. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm yeah. driving I mean, this it's thing. gold. It's like you know, I mean, it's it's priceless stuff, you know. Yeah, man. I mean, so uh, before we wrap up, do, do, do you have any other things you want to mention? Any other kind of these great stories that you and Chick, uh, this playfulness or this funny things that have happened with you guys? I'm trying to think of, um, it was just, it was, he was a great friend. I mean, and uh, he was just a great teacher. And if he knew you had the stuff and you weren't getting a part, He'd take the time to just find out, you know, slow it down and see where you were with it, you know, and then you'd get it and you go, great. And then he'd leave you alone, you know, I mean, wow. the only thing I could really think of and uh, that's, that's pretty much it, you know. I mean, well, I remember you did his teaching video with him and he even mentioned that, like how he breaks things down for himself, yeah, well, slowing it down. But when we were doing that video, it was amazing um, how... Uh, we as musicians, when a new piece of music comes out, how many questions we ask or how many, how, oh, it's got to be over a hundred things that go on instantly on, you know, uh, before you start playing. And because when Chick broke the music out that morning and we were sight reading that stuff, um, we started asking so many questions and they went, wait, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait till the cameras are on, you know? Ah, yeah, but, good. You know, yeah. You're not used to that. You're going, okay, okay, what kind of groove, you know, what kind of groove, da, 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 what's the tempo, da, 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 um, can you play a few bar, you know, blah, 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 because it goes like that. It goes faster than that. And that's what we do. Next time, check it out. Try and slow it down and you'll, you'll see. So I, that's for every musician. I think, yeah. you know, and that's how smart musicians are, you know, and that's how quick musicians are, you know, um, you know when they want to create something, you know, I mean, at least it's written. You know? um, so 
everybody that's a musician out there, I mean, we're drummers, but no, I'm kidding. Ah! <laughs> I knew that was going to get in there sooner or later. <laughs> well, drummers too. Give yourself a pat on the back. Um, because, yeah, you you know, hey, you know, it's, um, it's it, it really opened my eyes, you know, because he was going, yeah, it's this and that and this and that. And then we'd start asking questions like, and they had to stop us because <laughs> we're okay. We're ready to go. You know, <laughs> we want to, we want to play this too, you know? Right. So, I mean, well, and that's, what's really cool. You know, I mean, he's, he's a great guy. Mama Korea is great. I mean, uh, well, one story comes to mind, but it's, it's, it's when I first met Anna Korea, Mama Korea, you know, Right, I mean, she was sweet. If you were playing in Boston, you had to go to Mama's house, and yes, and she cooked it up kind of like a smorg style, smorgasbord style. Yeah. And you see Armando, Chick's dad, and garlic and oil, spaghetti with garlic and oil. Oh hell, al yo yo, yeah. All right, al yo yo. Chick loved, you know. Mm -hmm. But I remember we're talking about Chick. We're talking about his family. Well, his family too, but I don't know. She was fantastic. She was incredible. What an incredible person. But she would, I remember when I first met her, uh, she says, Tony, Tony, too skinny. Chicky doesn't pay you enough. I'm going, <laughs> he goes, Chicky, Chicky, come here, come here, Chicky. Chicky, look at look how skinny this kid is. Yeah, pay him some more money. You know, I'm like, he goes, all right, ma. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> zip it. You know. But, yeah, but she could get away with that. She's mama. Yeah. And chick, well, like I said, I mean, how, you know, I mean, they, I mean, it's just great memories, you know. I mean, I love all the funny stuff. I mean, you first get your recording Walkman, and then you start recording stuff, and you start recording funny stuff backstage. And I still might have some of those bits, those tapes. And chick was hilarious. I mean, we were all hilarious, you know. It's like. I mean, I can only imagine those days. Well, Lenny, it, Lenny White is hilarious guy. Stanley is hilarious. They all got a great yeah. sense of humor. Steve Gadd's got a great sense of humor. I think anybody who's played with Chick has to have a great sense of humor to play with him. Yeah. Because I don't guy, think seriousness yeah. is in his book. You know? No, no seriousness, oh. you know? When you, you have know, to, you know? Yeah. But it's all... If it calls for it, but... Yeah, it's all about. I've never playing. seen it. I never seen him in an argument or in a bad mood. You know the times no. I've been around him, and no. there there be a lot of people grabbing at him. You know, well, trying to get his attention. You know, if if something's not happening, he'll let you know. You know. Yeah. I mean, you have to give up ten percent all the time. Well, he did all the time, which is he easy did. when you're having fun. You know, even when you're yeah. like trying to wrap your head around this figure that he says. Oh, you get it right away, you know? you know. I got a story. Um, I Chick invited me and Jamie down to hear the, this concert with the acoustic band, uh, and Dave and John were playing. It was here right. in California, in Pasadena somewhere, and uh, we were down there. and And I brought the piano player, who was a big fan that I was working with at the time, which was great for him. And uh, I'll never forget this. And you probably probably you know exactly what I'm talking about they were playing and uh John took this great bass solo and then Chick came in and then John as Chick was playing John played something right over him and you know how some people's egos would be their leaders and like hey man you're stepping on my tail you know right. and Chick just stopped for a second and he looked at him and he smiled and he played back what he played yeah you know, John actually got in his way and he just, rather than get upset, he just went, oh, okay. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And he played it back and John played stuff. And then they had this, you know, complimentary phrasing going on. It's and then Chick went like, he went like this, bye. And he just started going into the solo that just went up to another level. Yeah. And both Dave and John just put their heads down and went, oh my God. Yeah. Uh -oh. You know, he took it all the way out, you know, beyond what was he happening from that point. He'd bait you. He would bait you. He'd go like this, okay? Just when you think he was peeking, then you'd go. And I learned that early on. 
just when he thought he was peeking, then he started going like this. He's like, oh, yeah, come on. Now that I got you. Let's <laughs> go, you know? <laughs> and I remember because we used to play, we used to end, I think we used to end the gigs with 500 miles high. I can't remember. But that was the one that you had to really listen and check out where he was at in the solo. Because if you are already peaking and you thought he was peaking already, you're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah, it's like, where do you go like, from there, right? You get enough steam and you're going like, you know, like, oh, no, I did it again. He hasn't peaked yet. It's like, and all of a sudden, okay, and he goes, here, I mean, he didn't do it. He's like, here it comes. Because you look at you like this. My favorite look of his is when he go, he start going. <laughs> you know, the tongue would go out and go like, and then just, you know, I can't really imitate it right, but, and then I go, okay, here we go, <laughs> you know, but that was about it. Here we go. You just play, and then it was, at the end, you just go, yeah, okay, yeah, you know, it, yeah, it was, that was, I, you cool. know, I know. Listening to him all these years, I never really, like, you knew it was Chick when he was playing because of his sound and the way he played, but I never really heard him repeat anything. No. Like, he didn't have licks, like certain licks. Maybe if it was a Montunio or something, he'd play it similar or, or whatever, but I never, everything was always different. Yeah, and I think the best yeah. person who you could probably talk to about that is Stanley. Yeah. Those two guys were two peas in a pod, man. What a yeah, Stanley's a nice guy. Yeah, and of course. I mean, Lenny, you know, and you know, and, but but Stanley and him really, I feel, had a really special connection, you know, and especially yeah. on the acoustic side of things. Well, everything. I can't just say. Um, yeah. Just Since COVID hit, I haven't seen Stanley around, you know. Um, yeah. And by the way, how are you making out now? You you know you're recording tracks at home for people, right? Yeah, it's great. It's it's starting to get bit. I mean, it's it's getting busy, you know. And I do these little vignettes called the Mess Around series, which I posted on you. Oh, posted. they're great. They're great. Some I love them. Throw me off because they probably think I'm an egotistical. You know what? No. But no I'm advertising, man. I'm no, advertising no. because you know, and every musician knows why. Because everybody right. should do the same, you know? This is like, hell, okay, I'm gonna, okay. And then I'm learning this video stuff, I'm going, you need drum tracks? I do them. You want lessons? I do them on Zoom. You did something the other day that, you know, I, being that we know each other, I know you're a left-handed drummer playing a right-handed kit. Right. Right. And over the years, I've seen you play, and I we did a show together, at one of the last CC galas, I think. Right, right. You and I, and I was on percussion. You were playing, right. so I would watch, and I could see the tendencies. And when you played this thing, you you were doing something with your left hand, and your right hand was going around this, and I went, "Oh my god!" <laughs> I said, I said, oh my god! You know, it's like. It was well, so lyrical and so full of independence and funky. Well, I'm trying. I was to like. I'm trying to teach myself how to play lefty again because it makes like, you know, Simon Phillips said it, everybody else said it. It makes total sense. You know? Yeah. There you are. You're like right yeah. here. <laughs> You're like right <laughs> here. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. It, but, well, uh, it's, it's, it's and, less tension. Yeah. And when you get older, you go, I don't want to work that hard anymore. <laughs> right. But, but I remember watching your left hand of years ago, and I was going, what is going on with this left hand? And then you, you told me you were left-handed. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was going, wait wait a minute, his left hand's really strong. And I, I think I said to you, or I asked you, I said, you know, uh, your left hand's really strong. How did you get it that way? And you said, I'm left-handed. That's, that's and then, what most people ask me. They go, yeah. they go, usually they react like this. They go, man, your left hand's incredible how did you get it that way I go i'm lefty and they go oh then they, <laughs> they well, go oh, oh well okay oh, fine. you know <laughs> well tom it was great talking with you today and we have all the chicks music i think there's more stuff coming out in the can uh you know, sure i don't I know heard. i mean uh the electric band supposedly had some stuff pre recorded and i'm sure they're going to tap into the lot no the live recordings i think i yeah. heard that yeah. And so uh, and there's so much out there for young people that 
they really should, you know, get involved in chicks music. I, I just, I just heard, uh, I mean, I saw something posted on YouTube, uh, Al Miola's first gig at Carnegie Hall with Chick. Oh, wow. Yeah. And he, he introduces Al as Albert Miola, And he tells the story of how he, he found out, Al, he found, he found Al. Cause he, he said, he said yeah. I'll send you the link. It's great. All right. Yeah, I'd love to see it. And you know, when you told that story about Chick and you doing the rehearsals and all of that, yeah. and you didn't know, Frank Umbali told the story almost just like that. You know, he won the audition yeah. and great, you're great and all of that. And then I was he didn't there. Anything. Okay, you were there. I was there. That's right. for Dave on his audition. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So, so two weeks Actually, later, Chick time. calls him and he's talking to him just like you. And he says, uh, oh, you know, and and, and uh, I'll see you or whatever. And he goes, you mean I got the gig? He goes, nobody told you? Yeah, <laughs> In two weeks, he was like, waiting. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy, man. Yeah. But anyway, thanks for the great stories, Tom. Oh, well, thanks for inviting me to talk. I mean. Well, it was I great, man. It, you know? it was great because, you know, everything, everything we could hear about what his life was like, what the man was like, your experiences, you're a great, great drummer. A lot of young guys out there, they don't go as far back as that, you know. Yeah, well, he also gave me the opportunity to play with him, you know. No. I mean, and at that, such a young age, my that, God. That opened, up, that, that, that opened up everything uh, for me, you know. Yeah. I mean, so. Like you said, zero to ten. Yeah, he took a chance on a kid oh. from Long Island, you know. Well, it was a great chance, man. You know. Well, you justified it. You belong there. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. You definitely belong there. I mean, come on, man. You, you, you're a great player. And uh, you, you know you arrived. You knew you arrived. Once you get that gig, you I've arrived. arrived. I have? <laughs> you're there. You have arrived. Bobby, you're here. Don't worry about it. You're all good. Don't worry. <laughs> all right. So say hello to Evelyn for me. I and, certainly uh, will. I certainly will. And uh, we'll talk again soon. So. All right, man. Love you. Thank you so much. Talk to you. I'll talk to you later. Take care. Later. Okay. Later. later. All right. Don't forget. I'll talk to you later. All, All right. right later. Talk to you later. We'll talk <laughs> later. Later. We'll talk later. Okay. All right. Goodbye. Don't worry. Oh. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. All right. How's, how's everybody? Everybody okay? Yeah. All right. All right. Tom, don't worry about it. Uh, good. Good. You're doing good. I'll All talk right. To you already. Goodbye. All right. All right. All right. All right. Shut up. I'm going to go now. Goodbye. <laughs> See you. All right, Tom. Take okay. care, brother.